Have you ever looked closely at your motherboard, and I mean really closely, and wondered what all those random numbers and letters are? Well, I recently got a great comment from a subscriber wanting to know exactly that. And these aren't random scribbles, and they're not secret codes. They're a map. And if you know how to read the map, you can troubleshoot repairs and even understand your VRM. In today's video, we're gonna be understanding the language of your motherboard. Let's get started. Now, before we begin, we need to establish what we're actually looking at. That white paint stamped all over the circuit board, in the industry, that is called the silk screen. And those specific codes, those are reference designators, or ref des for short. Now, why do these exist? Part of it is for the robots that build the board and the technicians that fix them. When a tech is fixing a board, they look at a schematic that says check component C127. That ref des is the street address that guides them to the exact right part. The system is mostly universal. The letter tells you the type of component. The number, like 127 in C127, tells you exactly which one it is in the sequence. It's a unique ID, so you know you are testing the 127th capacitor on the list and not the one right next to it. Now, one quick disclaimer before we move on, the list I'm about to give you is the industry standard, but it is not a law. Manufacturers, especially in laptops, sometimes make up their own codes. So treat these labels as a map, not a rule book. Use the code as a hint, but trust your eyes. Also, we aren't going to cover every single code today because frankly, there are hundreds of them for obscure industrial parts you will never see on a PC. We are focusing on the ones that actually matter. Now let's look at the reliable ones, the big five. If you were to look at the sheer volume of parts on a board, the winner is usually C. C stands for capacitor. Think of these like tiny buckets or batteries. Their job is to smooth out the flow of electricity. If the voltage dips, the capacitor dumps its bucket to keep things stable. So if you see a C, remember it's holding a charge. Now, keeping power stable is great, but sometimes you need to hold it back to prevent it from frying delicate parts. That is the job of R, or the resistor. These are usually the smallest, flattest black rectangles on the board. While a capacitor stores energy, a resistor's job is to restrict it. They are the traffic cops, narrowing the lanes to slow down the current. Now, capacitors and resistors are passive, they just sit there. But your CPU needs power to be turned on and off. For that, you need a high-speed switch. That switch is labeled Q. You will always find these clustered around the CPU socket in what we call the VRM or voltage regulator module. Q is the standard label for a transistor or MOSFET. These are the muscles of the motherboard. They handle the heavy lifting, delivering massive current to the processor. If a motherboard blows up or smokes, it's usually a Q in the VRM that failed. Now you'll rarely see a Q without its dance partner right next door. That partner is L, or the inductor or choke. These represent the coils of wire inside those big blocky cubes. They work in tandem with the transistors to clean up the power before it hits the CPU. And if you ever hear that coil whine from a GPU, it's actually the L component physically vibrating. And all that hardware that we just covered is just plumbing, moving raw electricity around. But who tells that electricity where to go? The logic comes from U. U stands for integrated circuit or unit. Unlike the other parts, these chips handle information, not just power. This label covers almost every smart part of your board, your BIOS chip, your audio controller, or even your LAN chip, and even the main chipset underneath the heatsink. And a cool thing to note, every U chip has a small dot or notch in one quarter that indicates pin one. If you replace a chip that does not match that dot to the silk screen, you will instantly fry that component. Now that covers the big five that run the board, but there is a second layer of components designed to synchronize and protect the machinery. First, we'll look for the shiny silver oval or rectangle labeled X or XTAL. This is the crystal oscillator. It vibrates at a very specific frequency to act like a metronome. It keeps your CPU, RAM, and USB ports in perfect sync. Without this, your PC has no sense of time. Next, check near your USB ports or power jack for F or the fuse. Yes, your motherboard has fuses just like your house. If a power surge hits your PC, this tiny component is designed to burn itself out, essentially sacrificing its life to save your expensive hardware. And similar to the fuse, we have D or DZ, which are diodes. Think of a diode as a one-way turnstile. It allows electricity to flow in only one direction, which is crucial for protecting your board from reverse voltage. And finally, TP. You'll see these little gold circles with no parts attached. These are test points. When this board was built, a factory robot touched these dots to verify the board was alive. For advanced repair techs, these are the secret entryways to measure voltages without taking the board apart. All right, now that we have the core alphabet down, we need to talk about curveballs that you will definitely see, prefixes and combined codes. First, let's talk about prefixes. Sometimes manufacturers add an extra letter to the front of the standard code to give you more context. The most common one you will run into, especially on a laptop, is the P prefix. Designers add a P to indicate that a component is part of the main power delivery range 
rail, such as PR is a power resistor, PQ is a power transistor, or even PU is a power unit. If you see that P, you know that the component is handling high current. And next, we have network codes. These appear when engineers pack multiple parts into one single shell to save space. The biggest example of this is RN. If you see a tiny black bar with multiple silver stripes, usually near the RAM slots, that is a resistor network. Instead of soldering four tiny resistors individually, they pack them into one single chip. So the code changes from R to RN. And finally, we need to clear up a major confusion regarding connectors versus jumpers. You'll often see the letter J, and in the vast majority of cases, J stands for jack, meaning a connector where you can plug something in, such as JUSB1 or J underscore audio. However, be careful not to confuse this with JP. JP stands for jumper. These are the exposed pins, often with a plastic cap on them. These are used to configure the board, like the clear CMOS pins. So remember the rule, if it's just a J, it connects a cable. If it's JP, it changes a setting. Then finally, we have the manufacturer specific labels. This explains weird labels like MCCN1. Since it ends in CN, we know it's a connector, but the rest is a proprietary code for that specific manufacturer. This may likely stand for something like main chassis connector number one. And ultimately, just remember this, manufacturers might speak different dialects, but the physics of electricity is a universal language. Once you know the landmarks, you can navigate any map they throw at you. I hope this video helped you understand the core principles of motherboard labels, and a massive thank you to the subscriber that brought up this question. And if you liked this video and want to see more, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you have a topic that you'd like to see explained, please drop in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep growing.